and welcome to Acoustic Fields and Fossil Studios uh, Google Hangout tonight. Um, my name is Alistair Dodds. I'm just going to be uh, the digital uh, interloper here and going to introduce uh, Dennis from Acoustic Fields and Raz and Will from Fossil Studios who are going to talk about uh, the acoustical issues in the studio and Dennis is looking to give them some help tonight. So uh, Dennis, over to you. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Uh, we uh, helped uh, Raz in his studio by uh, helping him find the uh, measurements that uh, would show him where his particular problems were and we ran a, an initial uh, comparison of his um, room dimensions with our database that we have and it's a great database because uh, it's a hundred and 12 rooms that took us eight years to put together. So these rooms are five, six, seven inches in, in difference. Uh, so we have a really extensive database and it's, uh, it's always nice to uh, take the dimensions of your room and, and put them into this database because all our measurements um, that everybody needs is, is in that database and, and we can extrapolate from that for your uh, particular situation. Um, Raz, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the um, um, process that, that you went through in your studio? First of all, thank you for all your help, Dennis. You've been really helpful and it's very interesting for us going through this process. Um, so the first thing we did is gave you the measurements in which you calculate the me me basic measurements of the room in which you calculated the possible room nodes and then the possible frequencies that we would have our issues in them um, with. Then um, what we did is uh, using an SPL meter, we have measured the average uh, sound of the room w in three different points, one of which is um, the listening position where we uh, measured with using pink noise, a 75 uh, SPL. Then we took another measurement uh, at the front of the room, um, which if I remember correctly was it something around 78 and then uh, we took another measurement behind me like two-thirds of the room uh, that was around 67 and we basically we reached an average um, SPL of uh, 73.6 after that what we did is we divided the room into um, different points in intervals of one meter all around the room and um, we, we, t we, we try to keep the same height of which is about the height of the listening position which is about a meter and twenty and from each wall in each point in a one meter interval a feet away we, we started measuring the, the, the low end in a different frequency so we started I, I believe we've done the first five frequencies that you gave us Dennis which was um, 61 and then 75, 85, 110 and 118. In the process we got really sick <laughs> but, but uh, we got better at it as we went along and because uh, we were like we're so unsure. We At first we started with a little analog uh, SPL meter which works on different um, sectors, so between 70 and 80 and 90, so it wasn't very accurate and we, we didn't know, we just we tried it to be consistent, you know, so a friend dropped by a nice digital meter which was much easier to get the measurements. So after a lot of trial and error and trial and error and uh, drowning in low frequencies, <laughs> we're really sick. I think we're quite happy with the <laughs> with the data we delivered. Um, well, it it's wonderful, Raz, that you followed uh, everything so um, precisely because 
when you look at the numbers that you did get, um, they really, really tell us a lot. But it, it is a little bit time consuming. I, I, I know that. But without 15 or 20 microphones that we could put around the room and, and an interface, you see we, we kind of have to do it manually. But well done. It, it's good. And what, what he's done here all uh, that, that are watching is we're first finding the average pressure level in the middle of the room because the middle of the room is where the pressure will be the least, obviously, because we don't have the boundaries. As we work towards the walls, then the pressure level gets higher. If Raz would have moved his meter out a little bit farther, he would have noticed different readings. But a foot is the maximum pressure area from the wall, and that's what we're after here. We want to know the biggest issue that Raz is facing at that particular location in his room. And you need to be this concerned about your low frequency issues because they they are all through the room and, and the data that you sent me, Raz, do you remember how many different positions you found issues in? Yeah. Well, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's let's take sixty one hertz because that was our first problematic frequency and, and I think it's present in nine locations. Where we have the problem, yeah. Yeah, so you, and, and it's a huge problem for you in that room. So I'm going to guess with, with a pretty high degree of certainty that you've heard this frequency being a problem before. Oh, yeah, I mean, all, all, all the frequencies <laughs> that you've mentioned, I'm very familiar with, with the problem with them. And um, I just, you know, I just didn't really know how to treat it, you know, that I just went on just using my ears and because I know and I reference in headphones and I reference on other speakers, that is the only way I could really check, you know, the low end, but it is really an issue and, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to sorting out it in this room because it's going to make my work so much more easier and enjoyable. Well, let me tell you from eight years of experience in measuring and building these types of rooms that a 60 cycle issue is the easiest of all the low frequency issues to solve. So we, we definitely have a, a problem with, with 60 cycles, 61 cycles, but it's a, it's a wavelength that we can easily deal with. So you've been working around the bad acoustics of your room and this is a room in which you make your living in yes I have you know I just I've never you know it's a growing process to me I had to prioritize the how how what I would get because I needed so many things you know recording studio is quite a demanding a financial demanding thing to have and um, you know since um, I have I, I always have Unfortunately, you know, not not many of us have the privilege of working within a properly, you know, diffused acoustically mixing room. You know, that is a rare privilege. Then you develop these techniques of how to cope with bad monitoring. You know, and I'm just kind of basically how I monitor things is I monitor things relatively to each other, roughly, to see how they, they interact, and that kind of makes sense to me. But um, it would be nice just to hear it the way it is rather than have the room distort everything, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because if you're comparing one to the other and working from that point, whatever you're comparing it to has got to be right. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You know, it, it's just, it's got to be right, you know, so. Well, that's, uh, that's good. Um, the other uh, area, the problematic area that I looked at was 75 to 85. That, that was an area that showed us quite a few um, gains, if you will, in that area. Um, so I'm sure you've heard that one, especially in vocals. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, it's amazing that the inconsistency of the room is, uh, is just 
cr crazy every if you know even around the listening point if I move my head like the most subtle movements you know I can hear the bass phasing and it's yeah it's it's different everywhere you listen to it you know so I just go all around the room and you know kind of take an average or I don't know what the process that my mind is really doing you know <laughs> but it's very inconsistent yes yes and uh, that's what we have to have is consistency you have to know when you sit in that chair it's going to sound the same each time you know so so you don't have to work around it um, well, that's that's very cool. Um, another area I saw was 110 to 118. Yes. That was another area that uh, um, was an issue. And then we have obviously harmonics on top of that. But let's let's just stay with the fundamental right now, and 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 we can uh, go from that point. We have to work in acoustics from the low frequency areas on up. If you don't deal with the low frequency areas in your room, the middles and the highs become really secondary and they need to be primary, especially with vocals, because that's where all our emotion is in music. I mean, we got to get the vocals right. So if we get the low end right, a lot of times the mids will naturally come in to their own way because they were being smothered by the low end in the room to begin with. So we have to work from the low end up and we need to address the 61 cycle problem throughout your room. Now as I'm looking through your uh, video feed there I see a few places that we could put some uh, different uh, treatments, but with a 60 cycle problem, this is a problem for the whole room. So we're going to have to knock out all your walls. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, we're not going to do that, but we're going to have to add units to your room. Okay. Do you, do you have space for more things in, in your studio? Um, it's getting it's getting crowded, really. But <laughs> how how big how big is our sixty sixty hertz friend? Well, it's the um, I have to calculate the height uh, for us because I haven't done that, and um, but its depth is twelve inches, one foot. Okay. Yeah, and, and and width. I mean, eighteen it's one, inches. Eighteen inches, like in depth, from the wall. No, and these units. These units will sit flat against the wall, so they don't need to be out in the room. They can be pushed back against the wall. Yeah. Okay. And you can put stuff on top of them. Okay, a nice piece of furniture. Well, they won't move, so you can put an amplifier or, or anything. Amplifiers actually sound really good on them. Okay. So yeah, you could. They're 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 heavy, so you can you can do that. Now, based on my calculations, I I did uh, just a rough calculation. You need one unit for every two positions of problem. So you have nine or 10 positions at 61 cycles. Yeah. So we're going to need somewhere between five and six units. Mm -hmm. So you would need to, and with, then I'll have to fine tune it a little more for you and tell you which walls, which units go on. But somewhere between five, six, seven units total okay. to solve this problem. So we will make it go away. You're saying it's 12 inches in, in depth, but what is the actual width on the wall? Does it have a specific uh, width? Is it, how does it look like exactly? The, the, it's just a box, okay. a rectangular box. Okay. Yeah. 
with dimensions of uh, a, we'll have to a height to be determined, but but yeah. no taller than than sixty inches. Okay. Uh, one point six five meter, something along that line. So, um, but we'll have to calculate that. But a sixty cycle wavelength is very long, so we have to have a product that has the horsepower to to grab it and and tame it. Of course. And and that takes that takes surface area and mass. Mm-hmm. So that we that we can work with, and that's what we have to do first. Okay. And then we put those units, we install them, and then you live with them for two, three, four, five weeks. Mm -hmm. And and then we have a conversation, and yeah. you say I li I like how how it is here, how it is there, and we won't add any more units, but we may move a few around. Okay. So it's a tuning process, just like a mix is. It's a, a layered tuning step by step process. Yeah. Okay. So um, when we when we change the six about sixty hertz uh, frequencies, when do we deal with that? Does that um, affect all the other frequencies, or Yes, I'm going. I'm going to design the unit for you to include everything all the way up to the 118. Okay. Okay. So, so, these, so these units will deal with with uh, all, all the frequencies. Yeah, they'll be broadband. Okay. How does that work exactly? How how do, how do you can you control specific frequencies? By the uh, depth of the cabinet and the amount of carbon I put inside of it. Mm -hmm. The depth of the cabinet determines how low I can go, yeah. and the, the amount of carbon I put inside determines how fast I get there. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. The so carbon I controls the uh, rate, and the depth of the cabinet controls the level. Okay. Just like on your mixing board. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. would these same units deal with? Uh, is does each each unit you're saying controls not only the uh, 60 hertz? It would deal with with uh, like the 75 and the 85 and all these frequencies, yeah. all, all the low frequencies we measured. Yes, they'll they'll start at 30 hertz. Yeah. And they'll go through 200. Yeah. Okay. It's very interesting. So, so once we do that, we don't really um, change them anymore. We the the process that we might use is maybe to move them around in the room to get different results. Well, to get a smoother response curve. So yeah. we 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 just have to. I know what you need now. I know how to build them. I know what your issues are, and the tuning process comes in when they get in your room and you hear how much different the room is and then working with it at the mixing position you're, you're going to hear maybe some uh, shifts left or right in pressure so we, we just equalized all that out by moving a unit a little bit this way or a little bit that way that is very exciting stuff yeah it's very powerful technology it, it really, and it's it's heavy. So we we got to get Will to move them around for you. <laughs> he better start working out. <laughs> Fantastic! Very exciting stuff. Yeah. Um, so um, we we can definitely uh, work on that for you and. Uh, then we'll decide how and when and how much we need to go after the middle and upper middle and higher frequencies. Yeah. So we'll kind of divide things up just into two main areas. We'll, we'll kind of 
use our break point at 200 cycles and, and lower, all the way down to 30, and then we'll break from 200 up. Okay, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, but we have to put in the low end first. Yes. Because if we, go, if we do the opposite, then sometimes we um, don't get enough of the low end solution. What, why, why is that? Well, I, it, I think about it a lot. And when people just work with the, the middle and high frequencies, they still have the low end problem. They have more to find and, and cleaner mids and highs, but they still have that blur and smear that, that the low frequency energies bleed into uh, from. So I guess it's different for them because they hear more of the mids and highs and, and they work around the low end issues. I, I think it's always a workaround. Yeah. I mean, for me, I, I grew up playing the bass, and, uh, you know, I, it's very, very important for me to get um, the bass right, you know, and even the, I, I, I do approach mixing and, and, and this way as well, you know, I start from the low end, you know, I get solid, you know, it's musically, you know, a rhythm section and a bass and low end, I've, I've, and then I build on top of it. So it's the same. I, it makes perfect sense to me to, to go from the bottom up. Well, that, that's wonderful to hear because time and time again I hear people with two-channel systems that are listening to the music that guys like you record and the bottom end is all wrong. Yeah. And I know the engineer, when he recorded it, didn't get it that wrong. It's yeah. it's their it's their room that's really bad, and it's their positioning in the room that's really bad because, you know, engineers usually get it pretty good, and, and they they figure out how to get it the right way. And building on low end, the low end is is the engine of the whole music. Yeah, it's the physical aspect of of sound as well. You know, it's very important. Yeah, well, it, it gets us moving quicker because the energy goes through our bones. Yeah. Um, I have another question for you, Dennis, if I may. Um, I did send you an um, upload to our Facebook group, um, a little uh, diagram of, the, of uh, the way the room looks and where are the different points. Uh, an, an issue that I am, I've been aware of and I, I know of, from a lot of people, my monitors, which are right here in front of me and in, in, in my screen, they are quite close to the wall, and, and I know it is more common to have them a bit further away from the wall. So you think, um, again, I just did it because I wanted to maximize on the space, but at the moment, you know, they are about a feet, a feet and a half away from the wall. Do you think I should move it further from the wall? Um, yeah, would that affect any, ch if I do that, would that change any of the readings that I gave you? Um, well, what are your you, thoughts it about that? It, it definitely would change some of the readings. And, and let's, do you have room below the monitors for some units? I do, yeah. Okay, that, that is the highest, one of the highest pressure areas in the room right there? Indeed, yeah. So, it, it is, if you see on the diagram, is the first point and the last two are on the wall of the speakers and that those are the highest pressure. As you guess, yes. so will the dentist. <laughs> yeah. So if we, if we put a unit or two underneath those monitors, you'll hear how they really sound and then you can make a decision whether you want to move them or not. Okay, that sounds good. Because you're used to them in that position, so let's let's clean them up a little bit, tighten the base up for you, and, and see if that helps. And then you might be able to leave them where they are. Obviously, we can move them if we have to. Okay, that's good. Fantastic. Well, good. Yeah. Well, good. Well, the next step is let me get uh, to the uh, drawing board and uh, get some final measurements for you on the units, and uh, we can. Uh, 
take it uh, the next step after that. Fantastic, Dennis. Thank you very much for all your help. This, uh, it's been a very fascinating advice nice. for, for me. Well, you know, we'll, 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 we'll is, you know, standing with the SPL <laughs> meter spring. Man, this is black magic. It's acoustic stuff. This is black magic. What is going on here? So we, we're completely... <laughs> we're completely ignorant to the science, and we will we, we find this process really interesting, and, and we're enjoying it a lot, and thank you for everything, Ray. Well, I, I thank you, and, and I, I, I'm glad you're both uh, participating in this, and uh, I'm sure a lot of people are going to benefit from it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Right. Cheers. Bye-bye.